Hey yo, what's up Mavuna Church? Welcome to the second Sunday of August. I hope you're enjoying this month as much as I am. For those who don't know me, my name is Kevin Kilonzi and I'm one of the pastors at Mavuno Church. My amazing wife, Pastor Faith, and I have the awesome privilege of overseeing the downtown network in the Mavuno movement and we are loving it. Again, thank you so much, Pastor Em and Pastor Carol, for our senior pastors, for giving me this opportunity to bring God's word to God's people. You guys are challenging us. You guys are pushing us forward. And I truly, I, I, you know, I truly appreciate uh, being given the opportunity to serve under you guys. Again, if you are a member of Mavuno Church, welcome to church. If you are a new member, you just jumped, bumped uh, into this channel. Welcome to church. We are glad that you'll consider being part of this uh, movement. Last week, we began a brand new preach series that you are calling you. Yes, you. And in it, you're looking at how do we partner with God to bring lasting change to our nation? And last week, we said, uh, our father finished with asking the question, you, yes, you, will you say yes to the call? If you didn't catch that someone, I challenge you, go over to our YouTube page and catch that someone. I believe God has a fresh word for all of us as we get into this season. Now, of course, the Bible character that you are focusing on is the character Moses from the book of Exodus. And, and today I want us to dive into chapter 3 and chapter 4 to study that call of Moses, to see exactly what is God calling Moses into? Uh, uh, what did that call entail? Uh, uh, what are the details of that call? So, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 3 says this. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. He came to Horeb, the mountain of God, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and beyond, the behold rather, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. Now, the Bible says that God appeared to Moses as flames of fire from within the bush. It's not that the bush was on fire, but the bush provided a vessel from within which God's flames would burn through. And I love that, guys, because God appears as flames of fire from within a bush. It doesn't appear from within a mighty oak tree or a graceful plum tree or a colorful, colorful jacaranda in bloom season or from within a medicinal marubaini neem tree. No, God appears as flames of fire from within an ordinary bush. And that gives me hope because I know I'm weak. I know I have issues. I know I'm laden with, with you know, complexity. But God doesn't need to use a mighty oak tree. Do you know what he does? He shows up from within an ordinary bush. So you, yes you, you're the person that God wants to use. But secondly, I want you to know that what caught Moses' attention was not that the bush was on fire, but that the bush kept being on fire. You see, Mavuno Church, a bush being on fire in the desert is not a new thing. Bushes catch fire in the desert all the times. The twigs are already dry. And so any spark or any fire, as maybe, you know, shepherds are putting up their fire to cook or they're keeping them, them, themselves warm uh, in the night, any fire can light up any bush. What caught Moses' attention, though, was that the bush kept being on fire. What I'm driving to is that many times, you and I, ordinary bushes, we can catch fire for Jesus, man. We can have fire for the transformation of our nation. But what catches the nation's attention, what catches the people's attention, is that we keep being on fire continually. Anyone can be on fire for society change. Anyone can be on fire for good governance and maternal health care and mental health causes. But people being on fire for a just cause or for a righteous reason, that is not new. The question is whether you keep being on fire. What turned Moses' attention was that, was that the bush kept being on fire. Mavuno Church, we cannot afford to be the people who the best thing about our Christian life is our memories. You used to be on fire for Jesus. You used to go for Kesha and pray till morning. You used to serve God work week in, week out. You used to be generous and give to the work of the Lord. You did this and that for, for God. Oh, back in our days, sort of deal. You need to continually live lives 
that are showing that you're still burning for Jesus today. Your life cannot be a shadow of what it used to be. You need to continually to have that passion today and keep being on fire and set things around you on fire because God is still burning within your heart. What turns our nation around is not that we fight corruption for a day and then relax for a year. No, it's that we keep on fighting corruption. What will change the state of our roads is not that we, uh, uh, you know, the, the police do a crackdown during the festive season. It's that they keep establishing a system that will ensure people are using the, the roads the way they're supposed to be used. Now, let me, let me, let me switch gears a, a, a bit subtly, but, but say this. Maybe there's someone here today who there's been a certain passion that has been burning in your heart and it won't burn, it won't burn out. There's someone here who you have been, you, you've been having a cry for student ministry that has been burning in your heart for years and it, had it, it hasn't died down. There's someone here who is crying for wholesome music and entertainment uh, and it's been burning in your heart and it's not going down. Issues of health, environment, employment, leadership. Uh, people, who, you know, something has been burning in your heart for mission work and academia. I, uh, wh wh whatever it is, if that's you, I want you to, to turn your attention to that because maybe God is calling you to act on that part and to turn your attention towards him so that he can ignite you and launch you off into what he created you for. Sometimes we discover our area of passion by paying attention to the fires that have been burning within us and they refuse to burn out. If that is you, pay attention because this is what God does. Verse 4 says, when the Lord saw that Moses turned to look, God called him from within the midst of the bush and says, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he says, do not draw near this place. Take off your sandals, uh, uh, off your feet. For the place where you are standing on is holy ground. God calls Moses when he notices that Moses was now paying attention to the fire that wasn't burning out. That God will call you when he notices that there's, you've noticed that there's a fire within you that is not burning out and he's inviting you into that place of purpose. He's inviting you into that place of being able uh, to pursue him. And when he notices that, he, he calls Moses to come forward. And, and, and he stops him on his tracks. And then he says, remove your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy ground. And, the, and then he goes ahead to have this lengthy conversation with Moses. And, 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 you know, and, and you know, Moses, you know, God is telling Moses, you're the man. And Moses is saying, no, I'm not. And they're having this entire conversation as they go along. Then while still in this place, God invites Moses to do a couple of things which expound the nature of the call that God was calling Moses into. You see, Moses was starting to wonder whether there was something tangible that would make people believe that he was called, apart from just this conversation that he was having with God. And so God turns to him and says this in verse 2. Uh, uh, then the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? A staff, he replied. In other words, God asks Moses, what have I already put in your hands? What, 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 what are you already working on? What are you already working with? You see, many times we want to serve God and impact nations with what is in another person's hands. Many times we, we trivialize, many times we underestimate what is in our hands because we can see how well other people are using what is in their hands. Maybe you come to Mavuno Church and you look at Riga and at Maluki, our music directors in the movement, and you look at them and say, man, if only I could sing the songs about good governance that I would write. And maybe you look at another person who's on college today in our campus strength student ministry and you say, man, if only I had time like these students have time. You look at another person who's in a well-paying job and you say, man, if only I had that access and means and resources like this guy has, man, the things I would do for God. But God is already saying to you, what have I already put in your hands? What have I already been doing? What do you have in your hands? And God is calling Moses to pay attention to that. And then when Moses realizes it's a staff, this is what God tells Moses in verse 3. He says, the Lord says, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Come on, somebody. Look, you begin to appreciate what is on your hands when you surrender it to God. 
Remember, they are already standing in holy ground. So he's not throwing it out there in the other fields. He's already in the presence of God. And he gives his, I, 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 you know, the stuff as a, as a, as a sacrifice, so to speak, uh, before God. You only begin to appreciate what God has placed in your hands when you surrender it to God. And when you put it down in the presence of God, God allows you to see its full potential. And you can imagine how hard it was for Moses to do that. You see, this stuff ref reflected his career. But in a time when people were known by their careers, you know, so-and-so the, the person who plays the harp, so-and-so the shepherd, so-and-so the carpenter, so-and-so the tanner, this, this stuff not only represented his career, but it also within it was warped his identity. And now God is telling him, hey, take your career, your identity, who you are, and throw it to the ground right there in the presence of God. And so Moses, this thing that has, you know, led you for 40 years, this thing that has accompanied you day and night, this thing that you've been holding on, even in the presence of God, God had told him, remove sandals, but not yet say it at least, you know, lay down your stuff. This thing that he could lean on in a storm, this thing that he could lead his shepherd with, this thing that gave him authority, now God is telling him, surrender it, throw it to the ground. And the moment he did it, this thing took a life of its own. This thing took another form and it scared Moses and he ran away from it. I suspect, Mavuno Church, that when you finally surrender the thing that God has given you, when you finally put your stuff on the ground and say, all right, Lord, there, take it. I suspect it will take a life of its own and you will even run away from it. Moses had been using his stuff all along. But when he surrenders this to God, he's surprised to see it take a life and he runs from it. You see, your stuff could be your career, it could be your, your skill, it could be your time, it could be an idea or a thought, it could be a personality, it could be a hobby. And God was saying to Moses, when you surrender, listen, when you surrender it, you will see dead stuff come to life. Oh, come on, somebody. A dry twig, a dry branch becomes a ferocious snake when it's surrendered in the presence of God. A dry career path will become a, a new life and gain new meaning when you surrender it to God. A stiff personality can become the wellspring of life. A one directional idea can become the salvation of many. Listen to me, members of Mavuno Downtown, our uh, Mavuno Church Movement. Hey, I love the guys at Downtown. Eh? Listen to me, people of Mavuno. In your hands, it's just a dead stuff. But in the Lord's hands, it becomes alive, it becomes potent, it becomes unstoppable. It becomes a tool to redeem the nation. But you must be willing to let go of the stuff. You must be willing to surrender it. And you must be willing to steward it in the way that God wants it to be stewarded thereafter. Verse 4 tells us this, The Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took the hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. Exodus chapter 4, verse 4. You see, sometimes we surrender our staff today, and we pick it up the way we want tomorrow. But God tells Moses, pick it up by the tail. Now, guys, let me pause there. Because I have watched Nat, Nat Geo, I've watched <laughs> National Geographic. It's one of those wild shows. And I've seen people pick up snakes. And I've realized people don't pick snakes by the tail. That's the worst part to pick a snake by. Because a snake is a vertebrate. Now, for University of Nairobi students, a vertebrate is any animal that has a backbone. Now, that means it can recoil based on where you've held it at. And so the best place to pick a snake from is from the back of its head so that, so that you actually are in control because the tail can't bite you. It bites with the, with the head. And so God is now telling Moses, pick it up in an unconventional way. Pick it up my way. And so God is calling you today uh, uh, to pick up, to surrender the career, to surrender the stuff, and then pick it up his way. And when he picks, he picks, up, he picks it up God's way, the, the, the stuff becomes a staff back in his hands, from a snake to a staff. It doesn't become a scepter. It doesn't become a sword. It doesn't become a knife, a shield, or even a chariot. The thing he thought, the thing he, thought he needed to be able to counter Pharaoh, it becomes a staff. And sometimes, and I want to speak to people here because sometimes we make a mistake of surrendering our careers to God, but then we think that surrendering means change of career. 
Sometimes it means you do the same thing, but now you do it God's way. It means that it's now the tail. It's not the head. It's not the leading edge. It's the tail. You become a steward of this thing that God wants to do. You take it where God wants it to be. In your head, it's no longer the thing that you lead with, you bite people with. No, it's just a tail. And you are now stewarding it the way that God wants it to go. You are running that business the way God wants you to run it. You are running your career in the way that God wants you to. And henceforth, I hope you notice, henceforth, the moment that Moses picks it up by the tail, henceforth, the Bible changes the name of that staff from the staff of Moses or the rod of Moses to the staff of God or the rod of God. Later on, the Bible says that God tells Moses, pick up your son, your, your sons, your wife, and the rod of God. And moving forward, it's called the rod of God. I wonder whether what you have is called the staff of God, the time of God, the career of God, the skill of God, the talent of God, the hobby of God. Have you denied God to transform that thing that is just something that you can lead a few sheep in the desert with to transform it to a tool that can redeem nations because it's now of God? Whatever you have today, it can become of God. And so I want to ask you this question first today. You, yes, you, Will you surrender what's in your hands? Will you surrender it to God? Then God tells this to Moses in verse 6, all the way to verse 7. He says, then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand in his cloak. And when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Now put it back in your cloak, he said. So Moses put, it to put his hand back into his cloak. And when he, had, when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of the flesh. I believe that this is calling us to surrender the state of our hearts. God is able to transform a leprous, diseased heart and into wholesomeness again. God is able to use your staff, your career, but it does you no good if you lose your soul in the process. You see, the process of partnering with God to bring lasting change to our nation has a lot of things and it will consist sometimes of, of checking the state of your heart, especially when you go through deep, personal, excruciating pain as a result of serving God and pursuing your God-given purpose. Listen, pursuing your God-given purpose comes with pain management. This is what 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 says. In fact, Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Will means like mandatory. <laughs> you will be persecuted. And, and, and part of that means you will go through pain. And if you are not careful, that pain can leave you leprous. In the Old Testament, leprosy was a type of sin. Number one, it began under the skin. Just like sin begins with uh, uh, you know, desires and motives. And when those motives are not checked, they become a sore. And then the, the second thing that would happen with, with, with leprosy, it began under the skin, then it would, it would burst out like a sore. And many times that's what sin does to you as well. You think, ah, it's something I can manage with some Kidogo ointment. It's something I can be able to watch over. It's something, I got this. You know, I can stop when I want sort of deal. And then what does leprosy do? It spreads the rest of the body. And the same thing that leprosy does to, uh, 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 to, 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 to a person is the same thing that sin does to you. You started with, you know, it was, it was, it was one thing in an area of your life. It started with a lie to your parent. It started with, uh, uh, you know, watching, you know, pornography in a gadget. But then it burst out to every area of your life. Now it's the thing that covers you in totality, just like sin. And the leprosy would end up leading someone to be isolated from the rest of the community, which is exactly what sin does to you. You, you go with sin unchecked. You start living your fellowship. You stop being real with people that you share the community together with. And so God is inviting you to be able to consistently check the state of your heart so that you don't accommodate sin in the process of pursuing your God-given purpose. Partnering with God to bring lasting change in your nation can leave you in pain. And so you need to consistently take time to check the attitude of your heart and to surrender that pain to God. For some of us today, it's very easy that you're engaging society with the right intention, but then pain in the field that you're pursuing can leave you leprous, embittered, angry, and vengeful. The second level of surrender shows that, that we need to measure the state of our hearts and to engage 
uh, uh, as you engage, lest we start propagating hate and leprosy. And we've seen many social engagements that turned leprous. We've seen many people who are doing something for a good cause. But then in the course of time, the thing became leprous. Many started by saying, hey, let's empower the girl church. But then it ended up with, hey, let's fire all the men. It started by saying, hey, let's give women opportunities. And then it ended up with, hey, we don't even need the boy child. Who needs the men in, in our society anymore? It started with, you know, let's end police brutality. And then it ended with, hey, let's defund the police department. In fact, we don't need police here. Now, we don't need the police uh, in our place. Unchecked pain has a way of hijacking a great cause. Now, in a subtle way, as a nation, and I'm of course here, you know, uh, I know I can be cancelled any moment right now, but let me say this. As a nation, we started with reject the finance bill, and that's okay. But then if we don't check, it can now go to a place where we slide as a nation into a very leprous state where everyone does what they feel, what they deem fit according to themselves. If you are not careful, it's very easy for that pain to go and check, and check, and then it turns into leprosy. But listen to me, the fire can burn within you, but check that it doesn't become leprous. And God is able to turn that leprous hand, that leprous intention, that leprous heart, God is able to turn it back into proper flesh, in, into proper, you know, condition. God is able to do that. And so I want to ask you, you, yes, you, will you say yes to surrendering your pain to Jesus? Finally, God switches gears. And again, he tells this to Moses in verse 8. Then the Lord said, if, you do not be, if they do not believe or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they don't believe the second, the two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the ground. The water you take from the Nile will become blood on the ground. Now God tells Moses, Moses, if, if, if they don't believe the first sign, they may believe the second sign. But if they don't believe those two signs that I've given you, if they don't believe that you've surrendered your career and I'm using it, if they don't believe that you know, you're checking the state of your heart and you're continually inviting God to deal with that pain, if they don't believe that, then they will believe this third sign. In other words, this was the sure sign for Moses. And God tells him, Moses, I'm going to give you a third sign that will be for sure, for sure, this will work. And he tells him this, go to the Nile. Now, the Nile River there in Egypt was a sustenance of life, uh, of all life in Egypt. I think even up to today, if I'm not wrong, probably like 90% of Egypt lives by the, the Nile River. I could be wrong, but I, th I think remember, I remember such a statistic uh, back in the day. Basically, the Nile was a lifeline of Egypt. It sustained life in Egypt. And God tells him, uh, pick the water from the Nile, pour it on the ground, and the water will become blood. And he tells him this, this will be a sure sign for the Israelites. Mavuno Church, this is for you and I. As I speak today, this is a picture for us of not the sacrifice you and I go through, but the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross for you and I. That on the cross, Jesus, the, the streams of living waters, Jesus, the river of life, Jesus, the one who sustains our life. At the cross, man, he cried, it's finished. And, and, and the soldier, you know, appears his side. And what came out? Water and blood spilled to the ground. And he said, it's finished. And that's the sure sign for our generation that God has actually sent us out. Partnering with God to bring lasting change to our society does not just come through surrendering what is in your hand or checking the condition of your heart. It particularly comes through leading people to the one who's the source of life, who surrendered his life on the cross and whose blood was spilled. That's the sure sign to the nations. Come on, somebody. The Bible says this to you and I, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. This is Paul talking to the Corinthians, and he says, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. Verse 2, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus and Him crucified. Mavuno Church, this is what truly changes nations. 
pointing people to the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that people can be able to know that they have been set free. The captives are free. The poor can now say they are rich. The, the people living in great darkness have been able to see the light. Our prayer is to point people to the sacrifice of Christ on the cross and to be able to say that's the sustenance of our lives. It's not the Nile. Jesus is the sustenance of our life. That was the sure sign. And so today, as I close this second sermon of this month of August, I want to ask you this question. You, yes you, will you say yes to surrender? Will you say yes to surrender in your career and identity? Will you say yes to surrender in your ideas and will? Will you say yes to surrender in your pain and leprosy? Most of all, will you say yes to the one who gave his life to you and for the sake of your nation? Because at the core of that call of Moses, it was a call to surrender to God. It was a call to surrender to God's will and God's purposes and God's way of doing things. The reality is that most believers have surrendered, but up to the point of agreement with God. You surrender as long as you agree with God. Oh God, I feel like going to work in Mombasa so I can go when you call me to go to Mombasa. But the day you disagree with God, that's when it's known that you have surrendered at a very spiritual level, but you're not walking a surrendered life in a practical way. I pray that as we come to this close today, all of us can say yes to surrender. So let, once again, I want to ask you, you, yes you, will you say yes to surrender? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We surrender today on this holy ground, our career, our identity, our will and our purposes. We pray that you take them up, change the form, make us the kind of people you created us to be, that we can be able to walk a new path that the things you've already given us today can take a new shape and form. But some of us in the process of doing that, we've gone through deep personal pain. We've gone through leprosy seasons that has left us embittered. Lord, you are able to turn that situation into, into good form for us. And so I want to pray that you may bring, in, bring healing of hearts today upon your children in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray that you'll give us a grace to point people back to the cross of Christ. Point people back to Calvary for the honor and glory of your name. Most of all, if anyone does not have a relationship with you, that today they can drink from the living waters. They can drink from the river of life and be whole again. In Jesus' name I do pray and believe and all of us said, Amen and Amen. Thank you all. See you next Sunday.